In light of Dan's departure and of course your very long history with this company, what is your vision and is there anything that you plan to do differently? Well, thanks for having me, Emily. Fortunately, you know, our vision remains unchanged. We're still working on bringing driverless cars uh, to deployment at scale. And it's been a really exciting year for, year for us. Just in the last few months, we did our first driverless rides on, a, on public roads in a major US city. It's the first for any company. We've got really ambitious plans to scale from here uh, to be in you know, more locations, more cities, and make a really great product for people. And given the context of Dan's departure, how would you say, how would you describe your relationship with Mary Barra and whether, you know, you both are on the same page? Well, the GM leadership team, including Mary, uh, have been really supportive and we share this vision. Um, you know, it's obvious if you look at the status quo, we're not in a great place when it comes to car accidents in the U.S. And, um, you know, basically transitioning to an electric vehicle fleet across, um, across both personally owned vehicles and rideshare. And we all believe that, uh, uh, autonomous rideshare is the way to get there and a way to get there really quickly. And it's also a really big business opportunity uh, for a company like GM or really any major company uh, who's looking to get into the transportation space. Talk to us about Cruise Origin, how production is going, and is there any sense of when we'll see Origin on U.S. roads? Yeah, the Cruise Origin is an amazing vehicle. It's, it's meant for rideshare. So you sit in it, you've got tons of leg room, the seats face each other lots of cabin space. And so it's optimal for things like shared rides where you might be in there with another person, but we can really drive the cost down when you do those kind of rides. So it's an awesome vehicle. Um, we're doing testing with prototypes right now um, on closed courses. And uh, early next year, I think you may start to see the first production vehicles roll off the line and hopefully go into deployment. Why in your view is Cruise, Cruise's technology better than what Waymo has to offer or Tesla or Zooks? You know, it's really hard to compare different AV companies. And I think uh, the answer is just, you know, when you can pull out your phone and use one of these products, first of all, we'll know uh, who's ahead in terms of deployment. But then um, also the thing is right now, you can't really compare them side by side. And I do think when you experience this technology, if it's anything like what our first users have seen, they're blown away. It feels like magic. They want to use it again and again. And uh, we intend to differentiate both on uh, the product experience, creating a really great uh, experience that's that's potentially better than our com competitors, but much better than the status quo uh, using rideshare services. And I think that'll be really compelling. I think people are going to like it. Now, as I understand it, Cruise has at least five permits from the DMV and the CPUC. You can transport passengers without a driver behind the wheel, but you can't charge a fare. Or you can transport passengers and charge a fare, but you need to have a safety driver. Are the regulations just too complicated right now to make a lot of progress? We did a good job on winding the California permit process right there, but you know we're one <laughs> permit away from being able to charge fares and do commercial operation. But as of today, we have people using the app, using the service. Um, you know, so we're we're getting a sense for what those customers are going to do and what they like. Um, and I think while today we're we're kind of hung up on this permitting process, that's a very ephemeral problem and going to go away. We're going to work with the regulators and get through these things and. Uh, then you're just going to see, you know, this this uh, product start to appear in more places and starts to be something that people use, you know, in their daily lives and just going to become normal. I think the discussion about permitting is important today since it's the first time uh, any company has tried to go through this and get permits from California regulators. But uh, I think that's going to be behind us pretty soon. What's the next big market for Cruise after the United States? Uh, well, we'll see. I think that the priority for us is, <laughs> you know, look, you know, even in San Francisco, a tech centric city, people have never seen a car driving around without anyone behind the wheel. You know, there's people on the sidewalk that look at these vehicles and they're like, they're taking pictures, they're looking at them, they're, they're, they're excited, I think, about the future, but it's also, you know, a little bit unusual. And so I think for us, we really want to make sure we nail this in San Francisco, not only uh, in a way that works for the city, but works for riders, and it's really compelling and they want to come back again and again. And then we're really going to put uh, a lot of ammo into this and try to scale it out in a lot of places really quickly. But our goal is to make it work really well and make it work really well here in San Francisco first. Any updates on Dubai? The World Expo in Dubai wraps at the end of the month, and one of the big themes is mobility. Yeah, uh, Dubai has been, uh, or the RTA in Dubai has been a great partner, and we're still on track for deployment there. I think it's a great opportunity to introduce, um, you know, the future of, of transportation to, you know, a city and government that's really excited about doing that. Uh, so we can't wait. So look, I think the big question regular consumers have is when will self-driving cars, when will self-driving cruises, for example, be on the road and I can take advantage of it? You know, how far out is that more mainstream reality? How many years? 
Um, well, we're starting small. I think the important thing is to get this working, make sure everyone is uh, responding well to it and the product itself meets expectations. But right now, uh, if you live in San Francisco, you can go to getcruise.com and jump on the wait list. We've already done hundreds of rides with members of the public and these AVs, actually dozens of them, are out every single night now carrying passengers around San Francisco. So it's here, it's not uh, you know, universally distributed or equally distributed, but it's here in small bits and pieces. And I think it's going to uh, surprise people how quickly that becomes generally available and uh, that many people who live or work in San Francisco get a chance to use it.